Son, no excuses. Now listen to me closely. I'm everywhere at all times. So just remember, I've got my eyes on you. Yeah, right. Good luck catching me. Now here we are, Mr. Johnson and I set on a mission to collide. Suspended? Mm. The last words before you die. See, they say education is the key to success, and I must agree, but what they don't tell you is education by the traditional school system also breeds competition. Competition for the best grades, competition for the best athletes, competition for the best social life, aka do you have that dull rep for them shorties? Now, competition can lead to positive results. However, there's also negative effects to it. Some kids get bullied for being socially awkward. Others lose self-confidence due to their lack of athleticism. And some even feel they don't fit in due to their inability to dress or purchase the items needed to be cool. So as you can see, the school education sets in motion the urge to compete, which eventually manifests to a world of eat or be eat. See, the school system works in the following manner. First, you start your education in pre-K, all innocent and full of enthusiasm. Then, at the age of five, you graduate to the big leagues, kindergarten. But still, virtuous, right? But then, here comes middle school, AKA the teenage years. See, by now, oh, you no longer that sweet, innocent little boy or girl. Oh, no, 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 my guy. See, now you hitting the puberty years and on the verge of losing that V card. So for this story, I'ma take you back, back to my teenage years. Now I know you gon' feel me on this one. See, every school has that one teacher or an administrative person that nobody likes. That one person whose only one true mission is to get kids in trouble. Now for my school, this was the school principal, Mr. Johnson. Mm. Talk about the devil himself. See, Mr. Johnson was that old, broken down, single man who devoted his whole life to his work. Man was probably still holding his V-card. So one day I was sitting in class, minding my own business, working on some homework. Then, Mr. Johnson walks into a homeroom class. Ah, Mr. Tim, is that gum in your mouth? Damn, he got me. Um, no, Mr. Johnson. Tim, go ahead. Spit it out. Now I'm no fool. I'm not spitting out the gum and get myself in trouble. Oh no. All right, Tim, just swallow the gum as slowly and smooth as possible. So with everything I had, I steadily swallowed a piece of gum and then opened my mouth. See, Mr. Johnson, I don't have any gum in my mouth. Oh, you think you're smart. But guess what, young man? You're still getting a strike. Now, in case you didn't know, in my school, we had what's called the strike system, a system introduced by Mr. Johnson himself. Now, the strike system worked in the following manner. See, in the beginning of the school year, each student gets a six strike curve, which basically means you get six get out of jail free cards. You can only get in trouble six times for the whole year before you get suspended. Now, getting in trouble can mean a variety of things. Anything from chewing gum in class, talking during class, being late to your next period, sleeping during class, nigga even sagging in school. Oh, you getting a strike. Now, to put it all into perspective, this was my fifth strike of the year, which meant I only had one more strike before getting suspended. Now, this was halfway through the school year and getting suspended. Ooh, that's not an option in my household. So the pressure was on. Now I'm in competition with Mr. Johnson to never catch me doing anything wrong for the rest of the year. So the next day I get to school and Mr. Johnson calls me to his office. Hello, Tim. It says here you already have five strikes already. Um, yeah, but they're from small issues like being late to class. Son, no excuses. Now listen to me closely. I'm everywhere at all times. So just remember, I've got my eyes on you. Yeah, right. Good luck catching me. Now, here we are, Mr. Johnson and I set on a mission to collide. Now, fast forward about a week, and I'm in math class. Now, this is where it all went down. See, before starting the class, Mr. Maxie gets in the front, and he's like, 
All right, kids. I need to know right now who took the test answers from my desk. See, Mr. Maxa used to keep all his test answers in his desk, and usually the desk remained locked, but on this particular day, Mr. Maxi forgot to lock his desk during lunchtime, and it just so happened that my desk was right next to Mr. Maxi's. So he was like, Tim, did you see anybody take the test answers? Mr. Maxi, that nigga right there. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Now, come on, guys, I ain't no snitch. So I was like, no, Mr. Maxi. Now with no one talking, Mr. Maxi decides to call the school principal. So Mr. Johnson comes to the class and from the look on his face, I knew. Oh, I'm food. Mr. Tim, we meet again. Now here comes the problem. See, nobody had yet snitched, but this is where Mr. Johnson played his card. See, to get everyone to talk, Mr. Johnson came up with a great idea. See, since no one wanted to snitch, how about each person will receive a strike? Now you gotta remember, I'm already sitting on my fifth strike, so one more, oh no! I can't let that happen, I'm gonna get suspended. So, I'ma ask you one more time, what would you do? Would you snitch and risk being called a snitch of the class, or keep your mouth shut, get the strike, get suspended, and get that ass beat? Now I did know who took the answers, good old Jay called sitting in the front of the class. So in order to catch the perpetrator, Mr. Johnson starts the interrogation process, calling each student one by one into his office to see who's gonna crack. So it was finally my turn. So I get into his office, and he's like, okay, Tim, I need you to tell me who did it. All right, Tim, you wanna be a snitch, or do you wanna get that ass woman? So I looked deep into Mr. Johnson's eyes and said, I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson, I didn't see a thing. Oh, is that right? Look. I know you did it, so you might as well just come clean. See, Mr. Johnson was trying to get me to crack, but not today, my guy. See, there's nothing worse than being called a snitch of the class, so I kept my mouth shut and took this L like a G. Now, since no one else in the class knew who did it other than me and my man's Jake, and I wasn't snitching, Mr. Johnson decided to give everyone a strike and decided to postpone the next test. Now, you gotta remember, Strike number six, right? Meaning your boy's getting suspended for three whole days. Now here comes the real problem. See, I needed to find a way to keep the suspension hidden from my parents. And just like usual, I knew the school would do two things. First, they'll call the house and leave a message. Then, they'll send a mail to the crib. Now, my job was to intercept both the voicemail and the house mail before my parents. So first thing, I get to my parents' room, check the voicemail, and just as expected, Mr. Johnson had left a message for my parents. Hello, this is Mr. Johnson, Tim's school principal. Your son has been suspended from school as of today. Oh, hell no. Delete that. So I delete the message, get to my room, and then came the main issue. What do I do for the next couple of days? See, my parents expected me to keep going to school as usual, so I had to come up with a plan. See, all I had to do for the next couple of days is to wake up early just as usual, leave the crib like I'm going to the bus stop, and wait for my parents to leave the crib. Then I'll go back to the crib and chill. Enjoy my three-day vacation. Easy, right? Now all I had to do is repeat the same routine for the next couple of days until my suspension was over and everything's good. So just as planned, the next day I got up early, got behind the crib and watched my parents leave for work. Then I got back into the crib and got to that PlayStation, baby! So first day goes by, no problem. Everything's working according to plan. Then day two comes, still no problem. Then comes day number three, but still no problem. I couldn't believe it. Three whole days and your boy didn't get caught. So on the fourth day, I get back to school like um that nigga. My plan had worked perfectly. My parents didn't find out and your boy was home free. So fast forward to the end of the school day. I get to the crib and find my dad already home. But still, no problem, right? I'm no longer suspended. My parents didn't find out what could go wrong. But then I see the new male sitting on top of the table. See, my dad had already gotten the mail, but still hadn't opened it. Oh, shh. Tim, can you hand me the mail on top of the table? Now I start panic. What do I do? So I get to the table, and I knew this was it. See, dad's whoopings are different, different. But then, right next to the table, I saw something. See, on top of the table was a glass cup. Then it hit me. That's my way out. So with the Oscar-worthy performance, I turned real fast, acted like I didn't see the glass, and hit the glass off the table, thereby breaking the glass. Oh, son, 
Are you all right? Yeah, Dad. Sorry. Didn't see the glass there. You need any help? No, Dad. I mean, I got it. So I slowly and discreetly get low, and right before picking up the glasses, I take the envelope from the school and stash it in my back pocket. Then I finish cleaning up, got to my room, and tore that piece of mail and took that dub like a G. So, moral of the story. The trick to thinking is not to think outside the box. It's to realize there's no box to begin with. What's up world? Thank you for joining your boy for another video. First of all, shout out to T Nation for copying that merch. Man, y'all the greatest, my guys. If you haven't copped that merch, what you doing, man? Links under the vid. Now let's get straight to the shout outs. This week's first shout out goes to the homie Omari. What's up, my chick? Oh, we got a hooper in the building. Okay, I see you. Ball is life. Follow my guy on IG as dot Adams underscore 16. Keep doing your thing, bro. Second shout out goes to my man, Patrick. What's up, my guy? Oh, we got a Suns fan. Oh, no. <laughs> Y'all caught that L, fam. But maybe next year. Follow my guy on IG as Patrick Bendy. Keep doing your thing, fam. Last shout out goes to the homie with the butter. Hey, what's up, my guy? 5'7 Dunker. Oh, oh, you jumping, jumping. Follow my guy on IG as with the butter. Keep doing your thing, fam. If you want a chance to win a shout out, subscribe to the channel, follow your boy on IG, and send me that screenshot. As always, live timeless.